How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is just a late post here. Uh, big breaking news coming out of Spain and San Sebastian. Uh, Martin Zubamendi has torn down a move with the football club. Um, disappointed, to be honest with you. Um, I did say we were close to signing this player on Wednesday. Uh, he needed more time over the weekend to think about it. But uh, supposedly that um, he's shown his loyalty to Real Sociedad was very strong for him and uh, he's going to be sticking sticking with them for the time being. Uh, very frustrating from our point of view because we thought we had a player that we thought we were given the green light from the players' representatives. But I think um, he's had a change of mind in the last couple of hours or the last 24 hours, should I say. Not ideal, very frustrated. He'd have been the perfect player for us uh, going forward, but obviously you now he's decided to stay put at Sociedad. Um, this isn't really a good look for Richard Hughes, who's just come in as sporting director, and also Michael Edwards has come back as head of football, because they've worked hard to get this deal over the line for the last week or maybe more than that, and probably been let down from the player side. Offered the right terms, uh, in terms of salary, in terms of contract, but um, he just uh, wasn't really sausage, um Martin Zubamendi just wasn't really pushed really, to be fair. Uh, look, it's not the first time this has happened to us. There's been a lot of occasions with the Calcio deal that happened last year. That fell because he didn't want to go to Liverpool. He went to Chelsea in the end. But for, this is a diff Okay, this is kind of the same scenario where we didn't get the player over the line, but it's different the fact that he's not going anywhere else. He's staying in Sociedad. You know, um, as I said in previous videos before, that whenever a player is born in the Basque region, their dream is to play for their boy or club, nothing else. Which is... It's something you have to respect, because we did... When Steven Gerrard played for us, he gave us the best years of his career at Liverpool. Until he went to LA Galaxy for the last 18 months of his career, and then obviously retired from football. So, you know... Um, I'm disappointed he's not coming, but... I can sort of respect his decision in many ways, do you know what I mean? I can understand it. He obviously doesn't want to leave Spain. A lot of the majority of those Basque players are very homegrown, very loyal to where they, for the club they come from, you know? So I'd say he was offered a new deal and he's been the high, he's probably the highest paid player at the club and he decided to say, well, okay, I'll sign that, I'll live the good life, I'll, live, I'll be the king of the castle, or what have you. Paul Joyce did come out and say that, um. With the view of the club, they, they are looking, well, they see Gravenberch and Jones as potential partners for, for McAllister, Sobisoy and Trent to play there. Um, they were still, the, uh, the other journalists as well, said that it's unlikely we're going for number six. Um, I think we have to go in for a, number, a defensive midfielder now. I really do. Um, and listen, there's loads of them in the market. Adam Wharton off Palace, that'd be a very difficult deal to do considering that he's just signed in January for 20 million. I mean, if you're going to get him out of Palace, you're going to have to pay close to 100 million. I don't think Liverpool are prepared to do that. There are other DMs available. Um, Edison off Atlanta is one we could probably do a deal with. Could probably play, could pro definitely play in the Arna slot system as well. Alan Varela off um, Porto is another one. I mean, we, we paid 50 million for those DS back in January 2022. I'm sure Liverpool will probably put, if they offered 60 now, they, they probably would, he, they probably would snap their hands off for it. So like, it, I think there was probably a bit of issues with, with they wanted to put, like, to pay, the, normally what Liverpool do with transfers is, they pay in installments, where they pay, let's say, let's say it was a 50 million pound deal, they'll probably pay 25 for the first payment, 12.5 for the second payment, and for the last payment, another 12.5, and the deal is fully completed over a three to five year period. But Sociedad wanted the first payment up front, they wanted the whole thing payment on, on front as well. And maybe there was a slight reluctance on Liverpool's side that they weren't really going to, going to do it. So, look, I don't entirely blame uh, Liverpool on this, but I think they should have really acted a lot quicker than what's happened because they've had a little bit of egg on their face waiting for too long for the player to turn around and say, Oh, I don't want to come now. You know what I mean? It's not a good look for Hugh Hughes. It's not a good look for Michael Edwards. It's definitely not a good look for the recruitment team as well. And I think Arna Slot, who's just come into the job, 
in his first two months at the club. He would feel a little bit frustrated as well, the fact that he hasn't got this deal over the line. Because that would have given him the sort of a reassurance of going into the new season. So now, we, so now we're back to square one. You know what I mean? Um, Fabio Carvalho has, has gone to Brentford for 27.5 million now. I, thought, I said it was 20 million in the last video, now it's 27.5 in this video. We've had to recoup with nine, over 9 million for the the sell-on clause that was reached for Dominic Solanke from when he went to Bournemouth for, to Spurs. There's a... Um, there's talk of other players, like even Bobby Clark's rumours go to Salzburg, Seth van der Borg's rumours go to PSV. So there's there's all sorts of deals. I'd say there'll be a lot more outgoings than there will be ingoings. As I said before, that looking at our squad right now, we need a defensive midfielder and a defender, and we could challenge all the funds this season. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I don't see us bringing in the forward now, unless, let's say, one of our, say if Diaz was to leave, which I don't think he leaves now. I don't think he, any of our forwards leave now in this summer. You might see Salah leave for nothing in the summer of next year. And you might see Diaz being sold as well. So therefore we'll have to bring in two forwards. So I think, okay, I'm sure Liverpool, Liverpool won't have an issue getting forwards. They've kind of had an issue the last while in getting in defenders and midfielders to come in. Which... I don't know, maybe it's something we need to sort out ourselves as well going for too. But, look, we just have to get on with it now. Um, I'll just end up on the good news about the pre-seasons done now. It looked as if they were, have, were well drilled, well organised. It was a good, good win the other day against uh, Sevilla. Uh, Gravel Merch actually done well in the six. But for me, Gravel Merch is not really a recognisable six. Neither is McAllister, neither is Sobosoy, neither is Curtis Jones. Okay, each of them can play games there at the odd time, but we but they'll be looking at it and thinking, right, we need a solid six in that midfield who's gonna play, let's say, ninety to ninety four from sorry, ninety to ninety five percent of the games over a full a full season. Do you know what I mean? And then you can make and you can chop and change and make with it, but we need a we need a DM who's gonna be playing ninety percent of the of the games of the season. There's loads of them about if you pay the money and if you get the right deal in. I don't think personal terms are an issue. And I don't also think we need to, we need to do an awful lot of convincing to get players over the line as well. You know, you know, you know, at the end of the day, I'm amazed Edison hasn't left Atalanta. I'm also amazed Varela hasn't left Porto. So, like, you, you know, it is what it is. We have to get a DM over the line before the window shuts in 18 days' time. And we need a sign defender as well. If we sign a defensive midfielder and a defender, I think we've had a good window and get rid of the players we don't need. And then um, maybe in the January window, we might bring in one, who knows. But look, I'll, I'll just end it on this. Um, it's not it's not, it's not, not good, the fact that we have gone super many over the line. We were all pretty hopeful when he gave us the green light back, back on Wednesday. But sure, look, it is what it is. We have to move on. Um, I'll try and do another video before this game, before the game, just to talk about the game preview, the start at 11 for the game against Ipswich on Saturday. Um, I'll do a video for that on the Friday. I'll probably do a video, if I can, about the Premier League as a whole. Or maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I'm just I'm just hoping the air, because obviously it's getting back in there to the normal routine in the Premier League season and the whole season as a whole. So we're just looking to see what happens. So um, I'll keep you updated if there's any other news that happens in regards to a player leaving or potentially more players signing. So uh, yeah, please stay tuned if you can. So please like the video if you're new to this. Also subscribe to the video if you're new to this as well. Please let us know in the comments section down below about what you feel about the Zuma Mendy situation and him not coming to Liverpool and staying on Sociedad. It's just, it's it's a sick number. We just had to get, look, it is what it is. We've got to take it going forward. So yeah, yeah, thanks for watching the video guys. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, have a good day, have a good night with your options. Cheers.